<laughs> That's kind of how I feel today, this morning. After doing this, uh, I never got so many hits on the flat earth <laughs> oh, um, video that I just did yesterday. Now, I never said I believed this theory, okay? Um, I, as I said, I like to go to my Bible and get grounded because I am a believer in God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit, as you guys know. And um, I've never pretended that, you know, I was anything different than what I am. And I'm not, I'm not always the sharpest tool in the, in the tool shed on certain things, okay? So I've never claimed to be some genius, all right? <laughs> Along with you, I'm still learning, all right? And I just found it interesting that so many people were into this flat earth thing. And, you know, and I have never, I, I know that NASA has um, manipulated some of their photos. They did some, you know, they did do some photo shoot things. Uh, you know, I know that there was, you know, certain glitches that happened as well. So it makes for a conspiracy theory kind of thing going on, okay, in your mind. It makes you kind of question, makes you wonder, you know, just what are they hiding or are they not? And there's, and there's a lot of conspiracy. However, I've been, you know, thinking about it. And so what I decided to do was to go to ChristianAnswers.org. Great website. And I'm not going to read you the whole thing. You can go to it yourself. And just put in who invented the idea of flat earth, okay? And, uh, you know, or anything about the flat earth. And they give you a whole history of how it started way back when it was a handful of so-called intellectual scholars throughout the centuries claiming to represent the church who held to the flat earth, you know, theory. And uh, that they were ignored by the church, but somehow their writings made it into the history books as being the official Christian viewpoint, which it really was not. So they go into that, talk about the, um, you know, the early church fathers and how all of that happened. And um, they talk about Daniel Borstein uh, in the U.S. Library and Congress and the church fathers and the issue and the shape of the earth and who regarded it as round or spherical. And in 1828, uh, Washington Irving did the story about Rip Van Winkle, kind of a mixture of his, of uh, fact and fiction. And um, <clears throat> he was the so, sort of a, the theme in it was he was the lone believer in a spherical earth, okay? Um, and and it, it did some Bible quoting and that, and that kind of thing. And then later writers repeated, you know, the error of the flat earth stuff. And so anyway, it goes on. I'm not going to read you the whole thing. I, you could just read it for yourself and come to your own conclusions. Um, the flat earth heyday came with Darwin as well. That ought to tell you something. And then, um, okay. Um, all right, so. Uh, and it, it just goes on. It's interesting to read. I haven't read all of it. Um, Luke 17, 34 through 36 depicts Christ's second coming as happening while some are asleep at night and others are working at daytime activities in the field as an indication of a rotating earth with day and night at the same time. Okay, so um, I have lost my place here. Okay, um... All right, so in Revelations 7, 1, uh, some Bible critics claim that it is it assumes a flat earth since the verse refers to angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Actually, the reference is to a cardinal direction, north, south, east, and west, kind of like a, um, a uh, compass. And... Um, <clears throat> So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, the terminology is used to speak of, of the sun's rising and setting, even though the earth, not the sun, is doing the moving. 
Bible writers use the language of appearance, just as people always have. Without it, the intended message, message would be awkward at best, probably not understood by uh, understood clearly. So, in the Old Testament, Job 26.7 explains that the earth is suspended in space, the obvious comparison being with the spherical sun and moon. A literal translation of Job 26 is, he described a circle upon the face of the water until the day and night came to end, a spherical sphere also described in Isaiah 40, 21, 22, the circle of the earth. Uh, in, the, in the biblical Hebrew word for circle is C-H-U-W-G, which means round or sphere. I haven't seen it in the Greek, and I should look that up. Um, I, I can't do it right now. Um, but I'll try to look that up and tell you uh, if you you know if you want me to just you know leave a comment. Um, the Earth, a sphere, a certain astronomical relations were recognized very early. The stars appear as if attached to a globe rotating around the Earth once in 24 hours, and this appearance was clearly familiar to the author of the Book of Job, and indeed long before the time of Abraham, since the formation of the constellations could not have been affected without such recognition, and, but the spherical form of the heavens almost involves a, a similar form of Earth, and their apparent diurnal rotation certainly means that they are not rigidly connected to the Earth, but surrounded on all sides of some distance from it. The Earth, therefore, must be freely suspended in space, and so the book of Job describes it. He stretched out the north over the empty space and hangeth the Earth upon nothing, Job 26, 7. Proverbs 8, 27 suggests that a round Earth, by the use of, use of the word circle in the King James Bible and in the New American Standard, if you're overlooking the ocean, the horizon appears as a circle. This circle on the horizon is described in Job 26.10. The circle on the face of the water is one that, of the proofs that the Greeks used for spherical earth. Yet it is recorded in Job ages before the Greeks discovered it. Job 26.10 indicates that where the light terminates, darkness begins, suggesting day and night on a spherical globe. The Hebrew record is the oldest because Job is one of the oldest books in the Bible. And you've heard me, you know, we. I think that the Dead Sea Scrolls um, and the Greek Septuagint more uh, align with each other. So, but um, anyway, that's good. That's going back kind of far away. And then, and, and I know there's going to be people say, oh, you're you're hanging your your ideas on on ancient writings. Uh, well, hello. It'd be like, you know, saying a murder happened, but, you know, you can't use a gun or bullets or the blood or DNA to um, <laughs> to to <laughs> make your case, okay? That's how it sounds to me. Anyway, um, and then uh, it, it, the Greeks also drew the uh, meridians and the par parallels, identified such areas as the poles, the equator, the tropics, the spherical earth concept um, did not prevail. The Romans drew the earth as a flat disk with oceans around it. So this whole thing, you know, is uh, it, it's been a long dis discussion for, for thousands of years, okay? And in the book of Luke, where Jesus describes his return, Luke 17, 31, Jesus said, in that day, when the verse uh, 34, in the night, this is an allusion to light on one side of the globe and darkness on the other simultaneously happening, okay, at the same time. So it couldn't happen at the same time if the earth was flat, I think, is what they're trying to say. So, uh, and then, you know, so it has more information. Is the earth flat? Uh, does the Bible refer to four corners of the earth? Yes, it does. And it talks about Galileo. And the and what what happened with Galileo and the church, and so you can look at this yourself. So what I would like you to do before my time runs out here is also a very nice gentleman sent me um, um, a um, a video that I would like you to check out because I can't send it to y'all and I don't know how to. I'm sorry, but I don't know how to put it on on here. But I will 
in the little comments area. I'll put a little link to it, okay? And it's called Flat Earth and NASA Hoax Debunk Slam Dunk. Again, Flat Earth and NASA Hoax Debunk Slam Dunk. I looked at it. I can't explain it to you all, but it's very clear that the two people who have been promoting this flat earth, mostly on YouTube, are debunked. And um, so, <laughs> again, it, it continues. So my apologies if I completely um, messed with your mind the other day. But I thought it was kind of fun and interesting. And it's always good for us to double check and go back and read scripture and get grounded and hear what the Lord has to say. Do your her her hermeneutics. <coughs> Excuse me. And, um, you know, and, and, and to look into things and check things out. Um, uh, uh, um, okay, sorry. Hang on one second. And this was this this video was uh, sent to me by David Ridden. So I want to say thank you, David. I did leave a comment on your site. Um, so I appreciate you sending this to me so I don't have to reinvent the wheel or a new mousetrap, if you will, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so I appreciate that, David, for you taking your time and um, your, your generous time to send it to me. Um, so please check it out for yourself and do your own homework uh, and enjoy your day. And uh, as I will... <laughs> Try to enjoy mine. I've got lots of things to do. Margie with a whole list of things to do. So anyway, enjoy your day. Thank you for, for listening. Thumbs up. Got any comments? Now, I will say at the end, I do not um, I, I do not trust the, the, the Black Robes or the Jesuits or the Vatican Church. I don't always trust everybody. I don't, you know, I don't always take things... Like I said, I don't always trust NASA. NASA hasn't, you know, we spend billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars. And that was the other thing that got me thinking, why are we spending so much money? Um, if it isn't real, how do you, you know, how do you keep this away from so many people? It would have gotten out there. But at the same time, I was like, well, you know, uh, so I always go back to the Bible um, to get things cleared up. Um, and... Um, when 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 God does talk about the four pillars of the earth, you know, those those are not like uh, like making the earth flat. It's more of a of a strength, a foundation kind of a thing. Um, I don't know if that just made sense, but if when you read the Bible, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, so enjoy the video. It's only a 16 minute video that David put out, but very informative, and he's got lots of links. Uh, on, un, underneath his video and it's very well done and he, you know he really took the time to do this so all right so thank you so much and uh, thank you for following along uh, with me and um, <laughs> uh, that's why the music in the in the beginning is kind of da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway have a great Friday love you guys bye bye